Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, and uh, this is the third in a series on speed controls on the Walker Turner drill press. I already covered uh, the uh, motor base in 478, the, the motor and control in 479, and this is tips 480 about installing a low speed DC motor on the drill press along with the controller. So that's what I'm doing in this video. In the last video, and this is kind of funny, I talked about Bob Schramm, and that's where I got this uh, drill press, Walker Turner, and uh, I said, I told a little story about him getting trapped in the attic, go back and watch that. I knew the man, I, I taught with him, he worked for the savings loan, came out, inspected my home, and gave us the loan, that's a long time ago. I was surprised that I had bought this only in 1994 at the auction, and I'm surprised I paid 135 Usually I don't like to pay more than 100 but I had that tag on all those years, and, what is that, 24 years? And, uh, forgot the tag was there when I did the video yesterday. Also note, since I'm talking about speed controls, that on this particular press, there are the speeds. See, 4,000 is an outrageously high speed, uh, useless except in woodworking. 600 is the lowest, never low enough for me, and that's why I'm doing all of this. After I made the last video a few days ago, I went on and did a search on uh, these on YouTube in Pierre's Garage had one of these. So Pierre was doing this very similar to what I'm doing here, only he also put the voltmeter on there. And you know, I forgot to do that. I did that in private some time ago, put the voltmeter across these various uh, terminals here. I forgot to do that, so I will do that either in this one or the next one, although it's redundant. Pierre did a good job on it. Hi Pierre, how are you doing up there in Canada? I like your accent. I wish I could speak French or German as well. And then I forgot to also show you that on the back of this cover there's quite a nice wiring diagram. And uh, there is where it tells the resistors. And remember I told you I had to order a special resistor for this. And by the way, this company here, Pentapower KB, has some very nice videos on there about how to use their drives. So I think it's a good company. One other thing is I would like to put a switch on here. I'm interested in reversing, but they also have one that will uh, is forward, reverse, and brake, but that's about $75. I looked that up yesterday. I didn't know they had it, but I might put just put a double pole uh, type of switch in here, reversing switch, if I can get one at the hardware store recent, reasonably, because you know how cheap I am. And in fact, I do have several of these double pole, double throw, but the problem is this looks pretty light, like it couldn't handle the amperage, so I don't know what I need. This is not marked as far as its capacity, and I have three or four of these that are used, but, you know, that would go in there and allow me to reverse it, and if I did reverse it, I'd be able to tap on here if I ever had a notion to tap. The very first thing that I need to do is to take the motor, well, the switch, and then the motor off. I already took the belt off. For now, I'm going to leave the step pulley on the motor. That's a 5.8 shaft. My new motor is a 5.8 shaft. But for now, if it works out, I'm going to put just a plain pulley like this. This is 2.5, this is 3.5 on there to see if I can find the sweet spot maybe without using a step pulley because the whole idea here is that I do not want to ch change uh, belt positions and I know that most of you don't either and we've talked about that and I've had a lot of good comments on that. This is the original motor so I'll take that off and put it in storage the same as I did uh, one other time I talked about that in the last video and you can see that I've already installed the aluminum uh, bracket here for the KB drive so here I go I'm making some progress here I've got the switch off and I got one bolt left to, to take the motor off it's just kinda hanging there by chance now this is a capacitor start motor. Of course DC motors never have capacitors on them. That's an AC thing, but remember in the previous video I talked about that one-third underpowered uh, uh, horsepower motor on the Duro drill press and how it could barely start under the load of the uh, pull gear, which isn't much of a load at all. So the whole purpose 
of uh, capacitor start motors is to give it that extra oomph for starting. I just looked at my two delta drill presses. Both of them were equipped from the factory by capacitor start. Someone made a comment in one of the previous videos about capacitors and from the comment I take it that he didn't understand the purpose of a capacitor start and that's uh, it gives it that uh, extra boost only with the starting uh, of it till the centrifugal switch kicks it out because uh, there are two sets of windings, you know that, I think, in these split phase motors. So, talking a little bit too much about that, so let me take that last bolt off. And there it is. Can I take a second to talk about these older motors and I see written in white here in my handwriting it says new upper bearing January 1999 so I had it apart and changed the bearing at one time notice and it's very heavy and compare the quality of this with new motors but here we have cast iron end bells that incorporate the mounting feet it's just a quality other than that bearing it's probably it's just a 70 year old motor that still works perfect and it's marked uh walker turner the driver even has an awesome tag on it and what is it? it's a half horse serve me well and it will go into storage tagged as to its use and if this dc business is a failure of course this will go back on well, now the DC motor is hanging by one bolt, and you know, this is pretty heavy for a septuagenarian to try to hold on his chest and then <laughs> get the bolts, and there's all kinds of washers and everything else, but I managed. But since I changed hydromatic transmissions in uh, <laughs> Oldsmobile's holding a tranny on my chest, I guess I can do this. All right, but no, the reason I'm showing you this view here is that, of course, we got slots here in the motor base. We've got can you see them here? There's slots here for my vertical movement. Also, this is so well made. This is all cast iron and uh, the whole motor bay, uh, mount can move in and out. I hope I don't have to change the belt. It looks like in order to change the belt I would have to remove the bearing. I must have done that at one time, but you know when you do things a long time ago you you, you really forget about them, but you know they went the extra mile here with a cast iron collar to support the head and Just everything is beautiful one thing I did notice from when I went to an auction I saw one of these in a table mounted. I got outbid But it had a belt guard on it. so then I realized that these of course came with the belt guard originally Something like that Dura one. I'm sure it was cast iron and weighed a ton But I never did have one for this Bob must have taken it off because it annoyed him well, that was a struggle, and it's about 10 minutes later, and I'm perspiring mildly. I had to turn the air conditioner off because it makes so much noise in the background, so that's why I'm hot, I guess. Uh, all right, I have it in a tentative position, uh, snugged up. The top ones are pretty snug. The bottom one is just uh, yeah, fairly loose. Notice how long this motor is, and, of course, there's a reason for that with DC motors. One, on this particular model, this is... a. Uh, I told you in the other one externally fan cool so we got about an extra inch added here for the fan that's under this housing and then of course we've got uh, brushes in here and brushes require an armature with uh, a commutator so you know that adds about that much to a, to a motor so that's why it's so long but uh, it's, it's not a problem just uh, a statement here now I noticed that just now that this pulley does not have a keyway so I'm not going to use that for now at least I'm going to use this one along with the key and I can move it up and down here within about an inch or inch and a half such that uh, I can get my alignment uh, I'm perfectly vert vertical here I don't want any twist I don't want any angle uh, although a, a belt will accommodate that but all right another thing I had to do these bolts were too blame long so I had to find inch bolts, which was really no problem because I told you I have over a million fasteners in stock and you say, oh no you don't. I said, well yes I do, I counted them once. Rim shot. 
The motor is mounted in a tentative position. I may need to move it. I'm not sure yet. And I've already been playing around with uh, the different speeds and I have determined that this 3 inch pulley is uh, way too big on here. So uh, remember this one had no keyway so I didn't want to use that. I did find this other pulley. I can go back to the step pulley too. But I did find this two step pulley that is three inch is two and a half on the top and two inch right where the belt is right now and on this end I'm on about a five inch step so still with the box not mounted I did turn it on I just had to see what it would do and you can see that I'm moving very slowly right now but of course there's probably no torque at that end at all and the, the controller is down near its low end. So I think I'm in a sweet spot there that is going to be usable. I still have some alignment to do up here. I'll have to drop the motor perhaps a half inch or so to get the, the belt uh, so there's no... Uh, so that it's level if I want to use that word, probably incorrect word. Now I'm going to turn my attention to mounting the box. So I'll unplug it because I've still got the cover off of the box and I'm going to go ahead and get the box mounted on the aluminum plate here and see what it looks like. I'm almost ready for a test run but I'm going to raise this up which would be very easy for me to do. It's now examining and it's way too low so I'll go up about three or four inches just by loosening those two screws. Now I talked about heating up and I looked at the KB website and they did sell a heat sink for the back but I do have in stock I don't know where I got these from but there's there's some heat sinks I had a lot more I must have melted them down or scrapped them or something but if this tends to heat up I will mount those on the back and uh, I got all kinds of other ones but these don't look like they're adequate for this application but anyway I probably will only use this for short periods of time and I doubt that it would develop any heat but time will tell and if it does I'll add the heat sink. That only took five seconds to raise or lower this and it, it had nothing to do with those bolts back there. I don't know what I was tell, why I was telling it that but uh, by loosening up this hose clamp one can move it up and down or swing it or move it wherever you want so that's my final position there. I'll tighten that. And here's the general principles, although everything is aluminum there for the purposes of conducting heat. But this is the other uh, device that I had on there. You might have seen it in some other videos. Just for storing the key. It's nothing more than two pieces of angle iron with a big hose clamp going around. So that might be an idea for some of you to use. Let me talk briefly about measuring RPM on this. I was using this, but I think I'm getting a false reading. And I do, in fact, yeah, actually, I have already ordered a tachometer that will go up here. You know, they're $9 or something off of eBay. So that's coming, and you might see that in future videos. But for now, I'm back to using the uh, Stuart Warner. There's a center hole in this. A piece of steel and I'll be looking at it through the mirror for your benefit just to see what kind of RPMs we're getting at this point. I took the liberty of borrowing Mrs. Peterson's uh, hand mirror here. She'll never miss it. So using this and I'm not going to use our AVE's uh, abbreviation either. Well, turn it on. And you see that I've got about 100 RPM at the moment, and I'm sure there's no torque at, at that speed. I don't know, but I can go as low as 100, and I'm going to start cranking it up a notch. There we're at 400. That would be a most useful speed. And in the following video, I'm going to do some drilling and testing. And I'm cranking her up. Getting a little vibration there. I'm not getting a full 1700 RPM at, at full speed here, and I don't know why. I'm only getting approaching 1500. 
which is really okay with me. I'm wondering why, but I, I don't care because I don't want that high speed. While you were almost falling asleep with the boredom of this video, I was making some other adjustments. And I did, in fact, drop the motor an inch or so so that uh, it, it would line up with the lower pulley here. So I'm now using the largest pulley on uh, the head of the drill press along with the 2 inch pulley down here. I really need uh, this pulley to drop down a little farther. The motor's as far as it, it can go. The, the belt is still just a little bit off. This ends higher than this but I'll worry about that later on because I'm at the lower extent here of the slots on the actual uh, drill press bracket. So Now I wanted to say also something uh, I could also put a smaller pulley on here and get even a lower speed, but I don't even like the idea of a 2 inch pulley because there isn't much what I call wrap. And the less wrap you have on a, between a pulley and a belt, the more likely it is to slip under load. So time will tell if this will work okay, but I also have the adjustment of uh, the speed box here. But the whole idea on this installation here is that I want to avoid changing belts from uh, pulley to pulley. So th this is where it's going to be, at least for now. Should you work on motors and wiring, make sure the power is off. I always like to give a safety warning. This is a grounded system, three wire, and had plenty of cord there, maybe too much between the motor and the box, but I can wrap that up with a wire tie if necessary. So in the next video, what I'm going to do, continuing with this series, I'm going to drill some larger holes. We're talking about in the 5 eighths and 3 quarter uh, size in steel to see if the speed is okay and if the torque is okay. Do I, will I stall it out? And I'm still wondering about that. And uh, th th that's the purpose of the, of the following uh, video. And then yet one later video will be strictly, I've said this before, hole saws. I want a speed that is slow enough for a large hole saws. So I'm thinking this will give it to me, but the Doubting Thomases have said, no, this won't work at the real slow speed. That's why I'm talking so much about the belts and uh, the other ratios up there on the top side. Also in this video series, this is my 14 inch Rockwell Delta woodcutting bandsaw. And I have two of these, but the other one has a different base on it. But this is the one I'm going to use because it will be so easy for me to take this motor off and put a DC motor on there. Remember I have two DC motors and controllers. You saw that in an earlier video. So I will be putting one of the motors right there. I also will be probably using this a particular motor, although it's not a very big motor, be putting the uh, pull gear system on that, see how that works, and then finally showing you how to do it, but I don't really want to do it. I have some gear-headed right-angle drive type motors that really slow it down, so remember this is all about slowing the blade down, and I have to put a metal working blade on there, slowing the blade down to about 100 or 150 feet per minute so I can saw steel and I don't I have a bandsaw for steel I don't really need it but there are hundreds of thousands of the Rockwell saws like this set up for woodworking that could be adapted if this is successful for metal cutting so stand by for those videos coming up in a in this series actually that concludes this video on the Walker Turner with the DC motor and the multi-drive by Pentapower, the installation all of, uh, of, of the whole thing. And I hope you liked it and the uh, possibility of you using something like this in your shop. And uh, watch the past videos on this and the future videos because it's just uh, so much that I'm covering, I can't put it all in one video. Remember, I also want to get that tachometer and have it mounted up here. And I'm going to demonstrate at some point the voltages in the multi-drive like Pierre did. So that you get an idea of what's happening inside that DC motor uh, to, to slow it down. 
I wish that I had a prony brake. Have you seen my videos a long, long time ago where I put a prony brake, <laughs> it was kind of foolish, on a hit and miss engine to, to measure horsepower, but that imposes a load and I could check the torque if I still had that. I finally threw that away. It was sitting around uh, for five years. I, I said, well, I'll never use this again. I threw it away. I'm not in the mood for making a new one, but I could, I could test uh, horsepower and, and, and torque with that rather than just a large drill drill bit. So, all right, I hope you like the video. hope you like this series of videos. And I'll see you in my next video. This is Tubal Cane. So long for now.